Do you want to become a better player in Apex Legends? Maybe it's not you, maybe it's your settings. Don't worry, in today's video I'll be showing you guys the best console settings in Apex Legends for Season 5. What's good, Wush Squad? It's your boy Was, and I hope you guys had a good Memorial Day weekend. This video is the beginning of a series I call Apex Academy. Now in this playlist, I'll be showing you guys how to use your favorite legend, how to improve your aim, and little tips and tricks that I learned over the course of playing the game. Now, if this is something that you're interested in, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and turn on all notifications to make sure you don't miss an upload. If you enjoy this content, don't forget, drop a like. Every like pushes me into the recommended page, which means more people will see the video. And we, as a family, can finally reach 10,000 subscribers. Now, without further ado, let's get right into this video. Uh, what's good, what's quiet? It's Professor Was here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Look, hey, it was here, and I'm gonna show you guys the best settings for Apex Legends Season 5. I'm just get right into it. Let's start off with the very first setting: interact prompt style. By default, it, it's, it gives you a very descriptive of what item you're looking at and what it does. Like gold backpack, guardian angel, receive squad. You revive squad mates with bonus shield and health. Med kit heals 100 percent health, eight seconds use time. So forth and so forth and so forth and so forth with each item right now turn it off you don't need it if you're good at the game and you played the game for a year and you know what everything do you don't need it just take it off it clears up so much clutter on your screen now if you're new to the game which is probably the reason why you're watching this i suggest leaving it on so yeah if you're new just leave it on it's not gonna hurt the next one is button hits now button hits, let me explain what that is. And you see at the bottom where my tactical is, LB or RB or the right D-pad or left D-pad, pretty much turning this off, it clears up all that clutter. Now the reason why I say turn it off is because you really don't need it. If you play the game, you know the concept of the game already. You don't really need that because you know every button to press already. So like I said, I would suggest just taking it off. All right, the next one, crosshair damage feedback, X with the shield icon. Now, when you're playing in the game and you hit this, it's gonna show the shield icon. But right now, since we're in the firing range, it's not going to. So if you've seen right there, the crosshair has popped up, boom, 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 boom. And when I killed them, it turned red. Me personally, I suggest taking it off. And the reason why, because when you're fighting somebody, you don't need the crosshairs in your way, cluttering up space. It's unnecessary. It's unnecessary. Take it off. Cause it just it's just blocking your field of view in my eyes. Just blocking it. So just turn it off. Turn it off and you'll be good. You'll be good. Alright, next one is damage numbers. Stacking. Stacking is honestly the best one. Let me show you guys why I suggest why I personally think it's the best one and why I suggested it to you guys. Now, if you look at this dummy here, I light him up, boom. 209 right if i switch it to floating it floats in the air and i have to do all that count so i don't know how much health the enemy has left so i suggest leaving on stacking let it do all the math for you and you can be like hey bro i hit him for 154 he's weak 154 boom he's dead simple as that so make sure you guys turn that off ping opacity i put it on fade and the reason why because I feel like it's very bright and like just in the way sometimes and i feel like if we got good comms i already know i already know you don't have to be that bright so me personally i just suggest putting it on fade it'll trans it'll, it'll look transparent and it'll fade out so i, I personally leave it away um obituaries that don't matter you can leave it on mini rap bro, mini rap <laughs> i can't even talk guys mini map rotation leave it off and the reason why i say this is because when you're running around the map you don't want the, the map rotating with you because it might throw you off you might say oh i'm gonna go left and then when it rotates it's really right so i suggest just keeping it off it's it's so much better weapon auto cycle on empty now i know a lot of people probably die because of this but i personally suggest leaving that off i mean turning it off and this is why so look i'm about to empty the clip boom automatic switch to my wingman now I personally feel like this if you're playing the game right you should be well aware of how much ammo you have left so me personally i think that should be off so it helps a lot like because maybe me i reload every time so i'm, I'm speaking on personal uh, personal experiences 
but it will definitely help a lot just keep count of how much ammo you got keep how many count of how many bullets you got in your clip and then boom you can do all that yourself you don't want it automatically doing that for you because that can be the difference between winning the gunfight and losing a gunfight so make sure you turn it off auto sprint leave it on i mean i'll leave it on put turn it on okay if you have it off right you have to click the sprint and you don't want to click the sprint be like look right now I'm, I'm moving forward on the left stick and as soon as i click it i start running now i suggest turning it on and this is why because as soon as i turn it on i automatically run i don't have to worry about clicking it or none of that I, as soon as i just move forward i automatically run so make sure you leave that on double tap the sprint you can leave that off because you got auto sprint on and coming damage feedback you leave that to 3d taking damage closes death box menu turn that off now the reason why i say turn that off is because if you're trying to shield swap with someone or I mean shield swap out of a death box and somebody keeps poking you from across the map with a sniper you're not gonna be able to get the freaking shield if they keep shooting you but if you leave if you turn this off and they shoot you you could still be in a death box you just better pray they don't land a headshot with a kraber uh, and you can get that shield swap off so i suggest turning that off now colorblind i don't know nothing about that i'm not colorblind so i cannot help you there but i just suggest personally doing it to whatever fits you best now stick layout i leave mine on default my interact reload i leave it on tap to use and tap to reload because that is the best way to have it a lot of people use hold but i'm telling you if you use hold terrible my crouch button i leave it on toggle so i can spam crouch shots uh <laughs> I do spam them a lot aim button i leave it on hold because i feel like that's the best way you don't want to toggle your aim button and then toggle out because if you toggle it it's just going to be stuck like that until you press it again so just leave it on hold that's the best way to have it trigger dead zones i leave it on none i leave trigger dead zones on none now menu cursor speed i leave it right here no way is that you can turn up more high it just pretty much just so how fast you can loot and move your cursor speed in the dev box or on the main menu very really not that important i guess to me but i guess to some people it really is like if you're on pc you'll be able to do this ridiculous anyway so it didn't matter uh look sensitivity now this is very important when i say very important i mean very important this is on default right look how slow look how slow that is look how slow my left and right my left and right Look how slow my ADS is. Look how slow it is. It's slow. Now, me personally, I play on high. All right, so boom. You see how it's more smoother that feels, how faster that is. And the reason why I suggest playing on higher sensitivities than a default sensitivity is because, for example, right, if me and him going head to head shooting at each other, and I'm on and I'm on three sensitivity, and he doing all this crouch jumping. Your left, right, strafing, crouch shooting, jumping in the air, doing all this stuff to not get hit. It's going to be hard for me to keep up with him, right? It's going to be hard for me to, to try to keep up with him. And I'm going to get rocked every time. So, because by the time you aim left, he went right. By the time you went right, he went left. By the time you crouch and look down to him, he shot you in the head. So, I suggest playing on higher sensitivity. Play on four. If four doesn't work for you, try five and so forth and so forth. I just feel like the default sensitivities are not very good when it comes to winning gunfights in Apex Legends. So I suggest practice on higher sensitivities, get in the game, get in the firing range, practice, 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 practice. That's all that I can tell you that it help you. And I missed all those shots. Ha! <laughs> but that's all that I can tell you. And the reason why I miss those shots is I tell you the reason. I'm, well, I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that. So, anyways, uh, Response curve. Me personally, I have an Xbox Elite controller, so I use linear. And the reason why I use linear is because I have an Xbox Elite controller. Now, if you don't have an Xbox Elite controller, which most of you guys probably do not, because that controller costs 200 bucks. And I know that's not a flex. I'm just being honest. It do cost 200 bucks. And yeah. <laughs> so you steady. Steady is nice when you have a default controller. Steady is nice. It helps you keep your aim and it helps you line up your shots very well. It's not gonna screw you. But me personally, I keep mine on linear. Now look dead zone. I leave it on small. And this is why I leave it on small. The moment you take this off, your controller is gonna drift so much. You may think your controller is perfectly aligned, but you've probably been beating up on the analog sticks for so long 
that it's just drifting wherever it freaking want to go. Like my controller is just drifting away. So I turned it off. Now I'm going to put it back on small and it may drift every now and then, but it's controllable. I can control the drift now. So I suggest leaving it on small. I suggest do not put it on large because then it'd be just a hard time. It just feel like you're playing on three sensitivity. I mean, three look sensitivity. So I suggest just leaving it on small. Movement dead zone, leave it on small. Invert look, leave it off. Vibration, I suggest turning it off. I turned it off on my Xbox Elite controller. So I don't feel the vibrations because the vibrations in the controller will throw off your aim. So make sure you turn that off. All right, this is very important. Almost, actually this is first important next to look sensitivity field of view right this is the default field of view apex gives you this is the default field of view this is 70 field of view look i'm not gonna move 70 field of view my only focus is this one target right now i personally suggest 104 to 110 but everybody do what works for them now boom 104 i can see all three targets right now so if any one of them try pushing me from the left or the right, I can see them. Boom, left side, boom, right side, I see them both. And I can see them all both while not moving from this one spot. You get what I'm saying? So I feel like a lot of people don't know about field of view. Field of view is very helpful when it comes to spotting other teammates in the distance. Playing on 70, you only focus on this one target and you cannot see the left, you cannot see the right. And you're just you just get bum rushed by one of these two players, and you be like, oh, I didn't see him. Oh, I didn't see him. Oh, 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 oh. That's because your field of view is only focused on one target at a time. Apex Legends is a game where you have to worry about three people, two to three people at a time. So you need to focus on being able to see every inch of your environment. So I suggest putting it on at least 104. Or play around with it, 104 to 110. And uh, yeah, I feel like that'll improve your game a lot. Now, when it comes to audio, I don't care. I'm a content creator. I don't care about the music. I didn't play the game for the music. You can leave the lobby music on, but as if I'm playing in the game, I don't want the music in the game because I just want to focus on hearing footsteps and I want to focus on hearing gunfire. And I leave the dialogue just so I can hear them talk to each other. But for the most part, I'm focusing on the um, footsteps, the gunfire, and if I hear people healing up and stuff. So. These are my settings, sound effects 100, dialogue 65, music volume zero, and lobby music 39. So if I'm in the lobby, I can hear the music. It doesn't bother me now. But uh, yeah, those pretty much are my settings. I suggest you guys give them a try and let me know what you think down in the comment section below if they helped out a lot. And uh, yeah, I am Professor Waz and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Aha, uh -huh. if you're new around here, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, drop a like. We're on the roll to 7,500 subscribers. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.